would like us to read from uh, the book of Thessalonians. The brother called me yesterday and asked me to uh, be with you today. I told him that I will make it. I'll come here and I will. And I asked the Lord, "What would you like me uh, to uh, to bring to the brothers? Because we are just bearing a message. It's the gospel, the Spirit of God that is talking to us and should be talking to us, and give us the message to deliver." And the Lord told me that you need to speak about the rapture of the church. Because this is something that the word of God, that the people of God are uh, waiting for. This is why we are standing in front of God today, and this is why we want us to pass on to the place that He has prepared for us when He comes to take us. And of course, if the person, the person of God, takes part in uh, the the rapture of the church, he is successful. But if not, then uh, he failed. And the Word of God says that in this life, w uh, we need to uh, receive talents. We need to uh, manage uh, blessings and talents in our lives. There are many people that are going to manage in the life what God has given, but they will remain outside uh, of the church. And the uh, the rapture of God and the word of God uh, says uh, in verse uh, 13 and chapter 4 brothers we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in Him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with a trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord for, and we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you about for you uh, very well know that the day of the Lord will come uh, like a thief in the night while people are saying peace and safety destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pain as labor pains of on the on the pregnant woman and they will not escape but you brothers are not in darkness so that this day should be a surprise to you like a thief you are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, uh, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. And verse 13, Now hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers, warn those who are idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Amen. If we were to go back to the book, to the letter to the Corinthians, we are talking about the, the rapture of the church as a mystery, as a revelation upon the centuries, um, from the beginning of the world up until today. That never happened before. And now you and I, we are called, as we are, being ali as we are alive, we have been called to take part in this rapture. And I do believe that we all want this. We are all asking for this in our lives. Please, Lord, keep us, protect us, so that at that very moment, I'll be ready to meet you in the air. However, the 
we need to pay attention to what the Word of God says. We need to understand that the preparation for this very hour is not a matter of that instance alone, of seconds. If the Lord finds me uh, in a prayer, in praying, I will be taken. If I've been found when I'm partaking in the body and blood of Christ, or if I'm listening to the gospel of God, I'll be taken. If not, I will not be taken. Because I am at work and I'm thinking about things of my professional life. No, it's not the, the moment that will define whether or not we'll be taken or not. But rather, it's the, the, the road that you take throughout your life that would matter, that would determine rather whether you be t will be taken or not. Of course, the church is helping us out. Of course, uh, the talents and the uh, apostleship of brothers and the Word of God is helping us. However, the decisions that I need to take in my life will determine whether or not I will be taken or not. It's not an issue of your brother to your left or to the right. It's not the problem of the pastor. It's not the problem of your brothers in Lord or your wife or your environment or your children. The only thing that matters is yourself. And the matter is, the issue is, how are you allowing the Word of God to enter into your life? And as the Word of God says, how are you allowing the Spirit of God to manage your life? Because truly, the disciples of Christ allow the Spirit to manage them and direct them. Do you understand what management means? All the decisions will be taken by the one in command. He who is under command, he is called to be obedient. He is not supposed to talk about the commandments of his uh, of the of, of the manager and uh, discuss it with them but rather he is supposed to be obedient L brothers says in verse 4 in verse 13 and chapter 4 brothers we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men but we can argue that grieving is uh, normal uh, when you lose someone. Of course, that is the case. However, the person that is looking at eternity understands that there's an eternal life for him. I'm pretty sure that he can escape that, um, that the, grievi the grievance and the sorrow that, these, uh, that, that the, a death may bring. Um, and I need to open up a parenthesis here. I'm not, I'm not supposed to tell you uh, how your relationship with God is, but this is personal. But um, we thank God that, uh, he, th because He confirms things. And He says, Do not grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. And we do have hope. I remember myself when I met Christ. What came into my life? was that hope. I wasn't a, s a great sinner. I was saved, uh, I believed in f uh, when I was 14. However, I had the fear of death in me. I was afraid that I would die. I knew about Christ and I knew about God, but I was afraid of death. Where am I supposed, well, where will I go? What a what will happen to me? And when Christ came into my life, He gave me that hope that there's eternal life for you, prepared. Because if we believe, and that word troubles me sometimes, if we believe, but the question is, don't we? But there are things that uh, that th th cast the responsibility on us. The Word of God says that I have taken care of everything. Do you believe that? If you do believe that, if you do believe that Christ died for you, then of course we will be able to believe all the rest. Because if that wasn't the case, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't have received the Spirit of God. We wouldn't receive anything in our life as a matter of fact. The fact that Christ died and was resurrected. That's the belief that made us able, that made us um, hold the faith up until now. And the Word of God says that this is what we tell you 
and is confirmed by the word of God that we, as we are still alive, w that Jesus will bring those who have fallen asleep in him according to the Lord's own word. We tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. And that, that this verse was written many, many years ago, more than 2,000 years ago, a bit less rather than 2,000 years ago. Don't you know, therefore, that you will escape this world, you'll be taken. But also, don't you understand that you will... Uh, not precede those who have fallen asleep, who have fallen asleep, in other words, died. It was 1974 when I believed. The church couldn't believe that we would reach 2023. And we don't know whether or not we were, it was good for us to say this. But we used to say that about 2000, everything would be done. We would be, we had been taken. And we believed that about 2000, or at uh, the year 2000, uh, the seven-year reign of the Antichrist would be over. We saw the years moving forward, one after the other. And we said to one another, we are ending, we are finishing. Of course, that wasn't the case, and we're still here today. But this is God. We don't know the times and dates. But today I'm questioning now myself. Am I still in that process? Day by day, do I understand that the, ta the rapture of the church is closer than it was before? And God and the Spirit itself, Himself, is crying out to us. But am I in the place that I need to be? Because God is going to, according to the Lord's own word, but for the Lord Himself will come down from heaven, says in verse 16. And that we can see in other verse that in the middle of the night, a voice, the voice of God was heard uh, saying that the groom has come, come out to meet him. And we need to prepare for that moment. The anxiety, your fight, your struggle that you come to the church. These, all, all these things are done so that you may be prepared for the time of the rapture. We need to be prepared in the gospel according to Luke, and in verse 12, this is what the Word of God says, that you, we need to be ready because of the time you don't expect, Christ is going to come. Do you understand what it means for you to be caught asleep? How am I going to be caught asleep? The Word of God explains that further down. Uh, and He says, For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. Uh, and the dead in Christ moves on, saying, And the dead in Christ will rise first. And also, if we go to the uh, the book of uh, Revelations, the Word of God says that I heard a voice, and that voice said to me, write this, Blessed are those who are dead in Christ. Yes, indeed, says the Spirit. B blessed are those who die before the coming of Christ. Do I want that uh, is my purpose the rapture of the church if god allows this in your life are you are you gonna say amen am i gonna say amen i don't know how i will depart i would depart to tell you the truth i would always rather live this life in that way because I'm pretty sure that it's safer for me to reach heavens. But I'm uh, then thinking that if I walk according to the Word of God, as God wants me to walk, then I will have no problem. I have no issue. Therefore, I'm, um, I'm saying, uh, I'm confirming and saying that, Lord, as you wish, I want just to be close to you. And I was one time in the church, I was praying. And I was thinking about that very hour of the rapture of the church, and I was afraid. I was terrified, actually. I was even sweating from fear. Have you ever, uh, were you, have you ever reached that point, uh, sweating from fear? And I asked myself, what is happening now, Lord? And, and the Lord talked to me that hour and said to me, if you want to be at that very hour, you need to go to the gospel according to Luke. 
and see what the word of God has to say it speaks about uh, Simeon he wasn't the greatest of teachers but he had some characteristics he was awaiting for the son of God and the word of God says that the spirit of God was on him that person never lost the hour of the coming of Christ because the spirit called him and he was brought to the place where Christ was in. And he never missed that hour. And Anna the prophetess as well. She was also uh, in the temple praying and fasting for all these years. And she was found there at that very instance. If you are like that, you will never lose the kingdom of God. Do not be afraid. Therefore, the Christian, whether he departs through uh, a normal death or he has been taken... He should just say amen to the word of God regardless. It doesn't matter how you're going to be taken. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. We will be with the Lord forever. Nothing will change. When we, rather everything will change. When we um, meet Christ in the air, everything will, will be new as the disciples were with Christ they were through issues but they were with Christ but the issue but the the reality here is that there will be no issues uh, in uh, eternal life when you enter through the gates and now the word of God moves forward and as we depart from the uh, the matter of uh, eternal life and uh, the rapture of the church the word of God comes now to confirm and explain if I stand outside and do not take part in the rapture of the church it will be my fault because the word of, I didn't accept what the word of God had to tell me what the word of God had to say for me but now the word of God continues in verse uh, 5 now brothers about times and dates we do not need to write to you and if we stop here, we could say that uh, we don't need to talk to you about dates and times. Why? Because you know when, he, when Christ is going to come? The answer is no. But rather, because we are listening to these words for years, we know for, for sure about the time of Christ. We do not know about the date and time, but we know that that date and that time will be like a thief in the night. This is what I know precisely. And at the moment that you understand and comprehend that this is the case, you will need to move forward in a very diligent manner. Without pressure, if I can call that, uh, if I can call it that, or revelation from God. God is not t calling or telling you about the dates and times, but He's telling you that it will be like a thief in the night. Because if we knew there will be zero chance for failure. Because the word of God is yes and amen. If the word of God was to say that I, I will come at that date and that time, that would be f certain. But we don't know now. And the question arises, what are we supposed to do? But the last verse uh, we, we saw says that, uh, that the word of God is faithful and he who calls you, is righteous thus the word of god tells you that i need you to walk in the path that you're not allowing him because the one that called you is righteous and faithful enough and gracious enough and merciful enough to lead you to be with you and he will be the one who will do things in your life not you if therefore he is the one who's inviting me if he is the one who's going to do things in my life what am i supposed to do i need to Accept the word of God and say amen to it and give him the right to command and take care of my life. For you, in verse 2, uh, chapter 5, for you very well know that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on the pregnant women and they will not escape. And people say... Uh, we just escaped the coronavirus, now we there will be peace. But that will never be the case, and we know that very well. And 
the Spirit now comes and talks to the brothers. He, the Spirit is talking to us today. Do not be afraid about all these things that will happen to the world. These things that we saw in verse 3, they will happen. Let your heart not stress about it. Not lose faith. Believe in God. Have I'm giving you my peace, said Christ. Not of this world. Because the peace that the, the people of this world are talking about is not actual. There are people that want to talk about peace, but peace is not in them. Because they don't have Christ, the master of peace in them. But you brothers, is in verse 4, there's a different path for the brothers for us today. You are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. The guidance of God. He said to us before that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. But that will be the case for who? For the people that are walking in darkness. But we're not talk, walking in darkness. We have the light, the Word of God. In every occasion in our lives, the Word of God has a reply for you. The Word of God will never be hidden from you. When you go uh, and pray to God and you explain the difficulty, the question or the struggle that you're having, He's going to stand right next to you like He did with these two disciples that went to Emmaus because they lost their faith. And they even declined, rejected some things. They said to themselves that we thought that He was the one to save Israel, but Christ never dis rejected them. But He stood next to them. He explained to them and answered the questions, and He would do the same for us. And they could say, who are you that is coming next to us, and you are talking to us, and you don't know what we are going through. But he replied to them, and in this manner, you brothers are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. To the night or to the darkness, yes. The sons of light have some characteristics, and if we go to the letter of the, to the, to the Ephesians, we can see what the Word of God actually says about the sons of of light that will be chapter 5 in the same subject because you used to be you were once uh, darkness but now you are the light in the Lord you are light in the, the, the Lord that is in verse 8 and chapter 5 we should never forget that we used to be in darkness and maybe because you are living in Christ many years, you maybe have forgotten how it used to be when you were in darkness. And you think that all these things that are happening to your life are normal. Nothing is normal. If you do not pay attention uh, in to, for your salvation, if you don't give yourself up to the Lord, if you don't present your body as a living sacrifice, nothing is given. And it's uh, also confirmed in the Gospel according to Matthew People are going to be left outside. People that said we casted out demons and prophesied. I don't know what you think that is given in your life, but let us confirm that nothing is given. Nothing is for sure. Live as children of, the, of light. And I called you to be in the light. And you need to walk as the son of light. Walk accordingly to the invitation that I've given you for the hour of the rapture of the church so that you may live eternally with me. You need to walk as the son of light. You have characteristics. And now the word of God explains what that, um, the children of light, uh, what that path is. For the fruit, says in verse 9 in chapter 5, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. You need to have fruit. And that fruition is not the result of your struggle or your effort. That fruition is given by the Spirit when the right circumstances are applied. If I do not take care of my heart, then the Spirit of God cannot pr uh, produce 
And what are these circumstances? The Word of God says that the fruit of the light consists in no goodness, righteousness, and truth. In your heart, in the heart of the person of God who escaped the darkness and is now into the light and walks according to the light, and that means that he continues on, not just walked um, just hours or months ago. He continues on walking in the light. He still needs to have... Uh, goodness righteousness and truth there is no other way for you to have a fruition from the spirit goodness what does that mean we need to understand because that is uh, a general way of presenting things uh, the philippines in the letter to, the, to philippines chapter 2 uh, the Word of God says, do everything, in verse 14, do everything without complaining or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God, without fault, in a crooked and depraved generation. For me to be able to have fruition, the first characteristic is goodness. What is goodness in me? Is for you, as the Word of God says, to do, every, do everything without complaining or arguing. And uh, that is applicable to your personal life and in every occasion in your life because the Spirit is talking to you and is requiring you to walk in that way. If the Spirit of the Lord says something uh, for me or to me in my personal life, I need to be obedient because I am managed by it. Therefore, goodness is in the heart means that this heart obeys the Word of God. And when this, the voice of God comes along, it does, th that heart is uh, complying without complaining or arguing. And if the Word of God says something to you, and I'm starting to second guess it, I'm talking to God and say, uh, you're not blessing me anymore, I'm, I'm calling you now, but you're not giving me what I'm asking for. I'm not even going into the... Uh, the thought to, into the realization that God gave me everything. I am accepting yes, the, the trial. I'm, accept, I'm accepting and I'm obedient to your word with goodness, without complaining, without arguing. And the word of God knows what uh, I'm talking about because this is, uh, this is our heart. My life is in an evil. But if we don't have goodness in our hearts, there will be no fruition. Let us know that. Goodness, righteousness. Am I accepting the righteousness of God in my life? And of course, there's a great verse saying that you need to first ask for the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all other things of this earth, that is, will be given to you because your Father understands and knows what you're in need of. Righteousness is very important because the righteousness of ours, our righteousness is like a dirty cloth. But the righteousness of God is what we need to have in our hearts. Am I accepting these words? Lord, how many times am I supposed to forgive my uh, brother? Are you, uh, seven times enough? But the Lord replies, not even close, Peter. That's your righteousness. But my righteousness is 70 times seven. Do you see how far away your righteousness is from mine? Of course, we have other verses that confirm that as well. Therefore, we need to have goodness in my heart. I need to accept without arguing or complaining whatever God asks me, asks of me. Because f He is faithful, the one who is inviting me. And He's going to help me out righteousness of God it needs to fit in my heart because if that is not the case then the Spirit of God has a difficult time moving around and we bring sorrow to it and lastly truth very uh, important before we met Christ we learn how to uh, uh, lie hide words our intentions and we understood that we need to escape situations through lying. But in front of the presence of God, no one is able to move in that way. 
we need to reach the presence of God with truthfulness. Please, Lord, forgive me because I am a sinner. Who can stand in front of the eyes of God? Who amongst us can stand in front of God and say that I am bold enough and you can ask me a thousand things and I will reply to you once in even one of them? The answer is no one. That is why we need to humble ourselves. Truthfulness, the truth, requires humility because you need to humble yourself. Understand that you are zero. You're not important. And the Word of God says, even if you do according to the whole Word of God, to the very detail, you are still need to call yourself a worthless servant. How could that be the case? What if I don't do 100% of the world, the Word of God? How worthless am I? That is why that heart is what God is delighted in. And that why the Spirit can move in us and can bring fruition. And the Word of God continues on now. Closing that parenthesis, explaining to us uh, about our hearts, and continues on and says, and find out what pleases the Lord. Many of us have forgotten, and others are even falling into the mistake of uh, bringing shame to the ones that are asking for the Spirit of God. And that is a grave mistake. God wants us to test ourselves. And let us understand that the struggle of, of, of the Christian is personal. You need to enter into your praying corner. There's a personal relationship between you and Christ. You need to walk in that way and say, Lord, allow me to be in your presence. Please, Lord, reveal to me what pleases you with a broken heart. Because I know what my heart is like. I know that my heart is not enough. And I know that I don't understand what you want me to understand. That is why I want you to reveal to me what pleases you. Because I truly want to please you. I truly want to do what you command me. Tell me now, if you are walking in that way, is it possible for you to remain outside of the rapture of the church? Could the Lord come along and say, you are not uh, enough. I don't want you to be with me. But... That person learned and is in the presence of God continuously. And he's testing himself and fi trying to find out what pleases the Lord and found the way for the Spirit to move in him and bring fruition. Can God just pass him by? The answer is no, of course, because he is righteous and faithful and good. And we are finding it difficult sometimes for us to do. And that is what we need to do, is to give ourselves up. Because sometimes I want to have the say in my life. Of course, yes, the Lord and His Word and the Spirit, but I want to do things my way, or do I want to do that thing in that way. And many times uh, some brothers and some people are trying to, find, uh, trying to justify what they like. Is that a sin or is that not proper? But when someone tells you, do not do this. I don't know where the Word of God uh, says this, but I've seen the path of people that follow um, that example. I've seen people of God walking what they have decided. And it seems, it looks like they were left behind. Isn't that enough for you? That is why we are not the sons of darkness as we used to be. Many times our heart, as the Word of God says, is maleficent. It's trying to remind us of our old days. And of course, we're going to be reminded of things that uh, we liked. And this is where we need to resist and that is why the Word of God continues on, continues on and says, Let us not sleep, fall asleep like the others, but let us be courageous and self-controlled. And if th that is what God wants us to do, you need to be awake. Do not fall asleep. 
because if you fall asleep, all these things will be for, for nothing, in vain. If you just sleep, if you fall asleep for a little while, if you say to yourself, let us not read the Word of God today, let us not pray today, I went to the church and I prayed there, or I read and I prayed yesterday, I don't need to pray again. If you remain in this, then uh, you will be uh, not. You won't be awake. And if we are here a couple of hours, then these are not enough. Then you have like another twenty-two. How you? Uh, what are you doing the remaining of your hours? You need to stay awake. the The enemy has ways of reaching us. And we know this. He uh, was able to fool millions of people. And I'm feeling very worthless and weak in front of him. If the grace of God doesn't cover me, if I don't remain in you know, the things that the gospel of God is telling me to remain to, I will fall because I know my mistakes and I know my weaknesses. I know that I could be led astray, but I also know how can I be, I can be secured. And the answer is, I need to remain awake, not in uh, in the carnal way, as in not sleeping at all, but in a spiritual way. Isn't it enough that you know the Word of God? No. The second thing is that you need to continue on learn the Word of God. Are you casting out the things that are not pleasing God from your life? Or are you keeping them and you are trying to excuse yourself? You're going to fall in a trap. You need to be uh, self-controlled because those who are asleep, they sleep at night and the drunkards are drinking at night. But we are of the light. That is why we need to take care of ourselves because we need to say no to the, to the things of this world. But someone could ask, e am I going to just say no to all? The answer is if it, uh, if it is outside of the word of God, then yes. Eve saw that the fruit was uh, good looking and uh, seemed appetizing. And you know what happened next. Complete destruction to the human race. Because Eve saw the fruit and it appealed uh, to her. And she also gave that fruit to Adam because he was, uh, it looked appetizing. And the results were you understand and you know the destruction that happened after that. We need to keep uh, to be self-controlled as we are the sons of the day. How are we supposed to remain in that? Because this is what will help me out to, send, to set myself apart from the world and comply to the Word of God. Dress yourself with the breastplate of love and the Word of God. My dear brethren, as the Word of God says a few verses above, you need to dress yourself and not be naked. And you need to wear a, br a breastplate. You have your heart that you need to protect. Of course, I'm talking about the spiritual person now. You need to wear that breastplate of faith because the enemy will come to test your faith. If he's able to destroy your faith and he's able to do anything that he wants in your life because you're going to lose your balance and fall down you're going to lose the face of god and this is what keeps you to your legs keeps you up if you take your head and your eyes away from christ and this is christ his word if you take away your eyes from his word you're going to be desolate never allow the enemy to test to rather uh, take out your faith if the issue comes, if the struggle comes, sometimes you may uh, grow weary. And that happened to me as well. And the message of God comes along. Be aware of your faith. I understand that I am now losing my path, losing my balance, because I have taken my eyes away from the Word of God. And I'm listening to words and messages from others, not Christ. Because when you lose your faith, it's easy for you to lose your faith. And if you lose it, you're in trouble. 
the word of God told me that soon enough you're going to have this or this will happen in your life. And, but that didn't happen yet because a day or a month or a year went by and that didn't happen. But you don't know the plan of God, do you? Do you don't know what soon en enough means. The breastplate of faith and love, therefore. Love has two parts. One, the first one, the most important, is to the face of God. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's easy, isn't it? My love towards the face of God is confirmed by me keeping the commandments of Him, but also loving him, my brothers. Having love poured out from my heart. And when the person work, walks in that love, he has his heart uh, secured. Because when bitterness comes along into my heart, then you are in trouble. Then you are under attack. And then uh, one thing will lead to another. You need to have the helmet that is the, uh, secu the invitation of, of eternal life. Your salvation. Never forget what Christ has given to us. The eternal life and the salvation of our souls. If you forget about it, then you are, you'll be troubled. And you'll be uh, having different thoughts. Many rather thoughts. And if you think of different things, you will remember. You will remember the good times that you, have in the, you had in the world. And the sins that you were able to commit. And now Christ is coming to take us. Because Christ didn't appoint us for wrath. We were not created so that His wrath may fall upon us. He didn't die for us. He didn't save us so that we may see His face aggravated. But we were saved so that we may live with Him eternally. And... The word of God will say this to John. This is the promise that he promised to us, eternal life. We do thank God. All other things were not promised to us. If I'm built up, then these things will be given to me. If these things will not be an obstacle for me in my faith, love, and all that, then... I will receive them. But what I have been promised is eternal life. And this is what I need to uh, struggle for. And through Christ, he, rather through God, he, Christ died for us. So that whether or not we are alive or dead, whether we are alive or dead, we're going to be received. If you are uh, 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 sleeping, if you are sleeping spiritually, you are in trouble. You need to wake up. But, let us know that physically uh, being dead or sleeping, in a, as the Word of God says, it's not a problem as you will be received as well. But as we are alive, we need to take care of our brothers and build up ourselves and our brethren. Brother, sister, please let us walk with Christ together. Let us walk appropriately with Christ. Let us not lose faith. Let us not lack all these things that the Word of God uh, tells us that we need to have. I need to have love to please to 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 plead with someone. I need to have love to uh, go up to someone and say these things to him or her. And the word of God in these few verses confirms the f about uh, confirms the person that is according uh, that is actually waiting for the rapture of the church. If I see now my heart, I see my weaknesses. And now verse 23 comes along as we see other things. The word of God says that now the God of peace will be with you. If you are stressed, if you see things are very difficult, understand and you need to know that you have with you the God of peace, the God who is calling us to be with Him. And He is calling us to work with Him and talk with Him. He is not a God of wrath. But he is a God of peace. And the person that is standing in the presence of God, 
he will have that fruition as a blessing God he will bless him and as a multiplier God he's going to multiply him and whatever happens to that person will be for his blessing Ananias and Zephira were, were in the church but they didn't have the God of peace in them may this God of peace may the blessing God may be may he be with you if you have peace in your heart rather if you don't have peace in your heart then the word of God cannot be actualized in you if you are stressing out if you are thinking uh, or declining the word of God rejecting it if you are uh, slandering and if you are talking badly against your brothers there is no action from the spirit that God of peace will not be with you may he be with us and may he holify us as he is a holy God and for that holification to be continuous not just for an instance that's not the proper life for me to just be in the clouds and then down below earth I need to have the presence of God continuously in my life I need to have that presence of the Spirit in me continuously, not just instances of it. And the heart, the Spirit and the mind of the person needs to be, uh, to remain. And even the body. And we will remain through these virtues, the things that we read before in the previous verses. We need to be holy in front of the presence of God. And there are words that are bringing us trouble um, we don't understand really. Can I truly be holy in front of God? Can I truly be without a blemish and without a recall, without any sin, continuously? The answer is yes. If we couldn't, not with our own power, of course, if we couldn't, then this word wouldn't apply and it would be a false word. However, we know that the word of God is true. Faithful is the one who is calling you to walk in such way. And he will do things if you accept his invitation. If you accept and comply, then he will make that right easy for you. And I could say also this, that it's the best path that a person could walk. What path? Not just the path of the gospel but the path of working together with God there's not a not it is rather the best way for you the best path you are walking in this world uh, as he talks to the Pharisees Jesus says when is the kingdom of God coming it's not coming in a way that it can perceive be perceived or understood because it is within the person do you understand what the kingdom of God it, what it means for the kingdom of God to be in you, for you to kneel down and pray and receive direction from the Spirit so that that Spirit can then lead your life. And what are you doing? What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to be obedient. You're not supposed to take decisions, to make decisions. You're not supposed to take action. You're not supposed to manage your own life, but you go to, the, to Christ and say, Lord, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Please lead me, manage my life. I want you to give me one thing, grace, so that I may be able to be obedient to your word. This is where the blessing of God is. May God help us out. Amen.